episode of the Audi Guide podcast. Um, just wanted to start off today this podcast by introducing one of our fine sponsors. We actually just uh, were able to get uh, an awesome sponsor. Why don't you tell us about it, Brennan? Yeah, our first sponsor is of our first introductory, or well, our first episode um, that isn't the introduction uh, is, is a company called Brush Tones. Uh, they're an up-and-coming wildlife art company. Right now, they're just exclusive on Amazon. So if you go to Amazon, you look up Brush Tones. Uh, this artist has got a, a myriad of, of different wildlife paintings, ranging from elk to, to uh, brown trout to fly fishermen. Kind of cool. Check it out on Amazon, Brush Tones. Keep it wild. Let me tell you this, though, is before we uh, move on too quickly from them, um, this is an untrained, like a professionally untrained professionally yeah. as far as uh, artistry goes. He's just um, naturally gifted and talented. Um, he's got a particular elk drawing of a, of a, it's pencil, right? Yes. Yeah, pencil drawing, pencil sketch of an elk, uh, that is f- phenomenal. We just saw a, uh, a, a start of one of the ones he's doing now with watercolors, another elk picture. Um, I think by the time, uh, I'm done with this, I'm going to have like every one of them because yeah, they're honestly yeah. really, really good. So yeah. check them out on Amazon. Just go to, uh, brush tones. The way I found it, you could type in brown trout picture or something like that when you go to uh when you go to amazon or just search brush tones um and check them out there yeah and so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be giving away five wildlife prints any of those five that you see up there that you like um what you're going to do is you're just going to follow audi guide uh, on instagram facebook or twitter or you can just search for audi guide on one of those social platforms and like the page like you know sign up follow us whatever we will automatically enter you for that drawing. Uh, if you don't do the social media thing, send an email to audiguide.promo at gmail.com with your name and email, and we will announce the winners. Remember, five winners uh, on next week's podcast. So uh, just so I'm straight with this, uh, they get to pick the prints? Yeah. Anything that's live, anything that's listed on that Brush Tones page on the storefront, and we'll have a link too. So you just don't have to go searching for everything uh, for, for Brush Tones. In our show notes and the description notes for this podcast, we will have a link uh, to that Amazon storefront. And then uh, you just choose the one you like if you're a winner. And uh, yeah, we'll send it to you for free. Nice. Yeah. That's kind of cool. And, and uh, for those of you that are just joining us, um, since this is our uh, technically our second episode and our, our first. Um, real episode, uh, your chances of winning are pretty yeah. <laughs> darn good. Yeah, so exactly. uh, we may only have five people. May, we only have one. I don't know, but uh, you have a pretty good chance of winning one of these paintings, and they are pretty, pretty awesome. So, mm-hmm. all righty. So tell us, Brian, did you do anything uh, hunting, fishing, outdoor related? You know, we've been week? we've been getting dumped on with the snow. Understatement. Big time. It's ridiculous, and uh, it makes it makes fishing hard. You know, particularly uh, getting out there when it's freezing like this. Um, you know, it's sometimes you have to. Your eyelets on your fly rod will freeze up, and you have to dip them in the water and have them unthaw. Um, but not necessarily fishing and hunting related. But for the outdoors, uh, I was able to go up Logan Canyon, and I uh, just did, you know looking at some some wildlife, and I was able to capture uh, two moose. Oh, really? Yeah, about killed myself trying to take a <laughs> picture of two moose, and. Uh, but that's that's kind of what I did up Logan Canyon. Up with Logan this Canyon much snow. in Utah. Yep. Did you have to get out of your car? Absolutely. There's like five feet of snow, six feet of snow. It was crazy. <laughs> How did you do that? Got out and sunk to the bottom of the side of the bank on the road. And that's was, dedication, bro. Yeah, that's cold. awesome. I was in shorts. Now for my my backup and and can I rant a little bit on this? Go ahead. Gosh, I love the snow. I'm I, especially during Christmas time and that kind of stuff. Love the snow. I think it should snow all through Christmas. Mm-hmm. You know, come now, January into January into February, and usually you're starting to feel 
maybe even the inkling of warm weather here and there, right? Maybe some 40s, 50s even, you know, interspersed with some 30-degree weather. But it has been absolutely killing us. Like, I can go up the road on the hill, for those of you who don't know, in Utah, we live in a big valley, and there's a lot of houses up on the bench. And even just a a mile or two from here, up on the bench, there is literally like three or four feet of snow in people's driveways. Yeah. Um, We're dealing with probably two outside right now in in the valley, which is unheard of. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. But I guess we need it. So... I, uh, my, my wife was texting somebody today, and they were they were gonna they had plans to go do lunch or something yeah. like that, and she said, she said let's just go to St. George, but then they were saying she said if I hear one person complain about a drought this year <laughs> she's going to kick them and it had a, a couple uh, not yeah. expletives but had you know emoji yeah 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 it's kind of funny but anyway so yeah this lovely week of uh, January is killing us with the snow yeah. but that's all right you know it's kind of you know along those same lines it, it's you know it's is specifically for fly fishing, you know, a lot of times we want the we want the good weather to come in. We want the snow to hurry melt. We want it to get good weather so we can get out there and start our start our year in fly fishing. And, and the one thing it's a key component to when when talking about fly fishing and specifically trout. And you know, it goes the same with I guess some of your other trophy fish like bass and and whatnot. But for trout specifically in the rivers that we live in, it's a key component to their healthy to the to the health of the fish. And in good populations of the trout and, and ideal situations for them to grow and the food source and everything is, is the proper um, the proper flow of these rivers. And around here, a lot of that is just dictated by the snowpack. So for me, I, I look at it and I'm just like, man, this is great because the more snow we get, even down here and up in the mountains, um, it just means you're going to have a phenomenal, phenomenal year of fly fishing. So for me, I get giddy. That's good to look, you know, the yeah, way to put it, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the perspective. And, you know, it's funny on Facebook the other day uh, in our little town, we have a town uh, Facebook page. There was some lady, she was just complaining about the deer in her. Oh, yeah. Because we're getting so much snow in the mountains. To push them all down. down. Yeah, and, and she was complaining about it. And, you know, kind of part of me is like, you know, she wants the city to do something. She wants the yeah. the wildlife, you know, resources to do something about it. And part of me is like, you know what, you you built your home on that mountain. You're not going to have a garden. What is that old Indian <laughs> you know? saying, right? right? You knew what I was when you picked me up. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so I'll uh, say I have a little bit of a, I guess, a, a vested interest in, in not wanting too much snow. You always want some. But where we go elk hunting, um, it, it's to, where the elk are. I mean, it's a huge area of state-controlled land or whatever uh, it is. And it's public. Yeah. And it's huge. And so the elk can be spread out miles and miles. And so they could be difficult to find. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when the on the years where there's less water, you know, it sucks for everybody else. And, you know, your grass is brown. But as a hunter, it sure is a lot more exciting when you have a, a concentration of those elk in uh, it's easy. in areas. It's a little more easy. But yeah. but I will say, though, that, that uh, it helps with their antler growth and their herd growth and that kind of stuff when it is a little bit more wet. So I guess we can take it. Interesting. So, Interesting. It kind of segue, uh, segues into kind of one of the things I wanted to talk about today and and, and kind of tease what we're going to be doing um, coming up. Um, one of the things I'm going to be talking about and put together is uh, tips and, and tricks uh, about what you can do to stay on your game as a bow hunter during the winter. So just kind of a tease of that. May have a, a guest come in and, and help week. us. Uh huh. It helps us show. do that. Yeah. So next week, look forward to that. Join us, and uh, we'll have some tips on how to stay sharp, yeah. uh, archery wise, uh, and it probably applies to uh, the the rifle hunters as well, but a little more difficult, I'd say. Yeah. But we'll probably spend a show uh, in a couple of weeks doing the same same kind of a concept, but with uh, fly fishing because, I mean, with with hunting, I imagine it's the same thing, same way. Yeah, you, you get. You get lazy. I don't want to say lazy, but you lose. Uh, you, you, get you get your lazy. Your, your skills <laughs> kind of get outdated. They're not outdated, but mm-hmm. you you have to brush up on your skills. And, and oftentimes you'll find if you wait three months from touching the fly rod, you're going to get out there and you're you're going to have some clumsy casts. Mm-hmm. And you're going to have some casts where you're going to throw it up into the bushes. And you're not going to be on your game. And so there are ways that you can stay uh, stay on, on tap, stay up to date with your skills. So... Yeah. One of the things I've always wanted to do, and I hope to be able to be rich and famous enough someday to have it, but I've always wanted to have 
an indoor like shooting range on my on my own property. You know, put up a you know a barn or something like that. Just to, even if it's only twenty yards, yeah. Um, or you know, something that I can a shed or something tall where I can have a couple different elevations and uh, just a lane where I can get out and shoot and yeah. keep keep straight. Because only right now the only time you can go out and do it is when you have access to the the range, the, range, the local yeah. bow shop, or yeah. Or if it's not snowing, you can actually go out and shoot. But um, huh. when it's snowing, yeah, I would not do, recommend. <clears throat> I would not recommend taking your fly rod. And going out and casting on the snow, mm-hmm. um, you will you will put so many abrasions and just little dings in your fly line, and you may not think it matters. But um, as we do this show, we're going to launch a website too, probably in the next week or two. Uh, we're, we got a lot of cool things we're going to share with you um, that, that are, are necessary or beneficial to make you a, a, a better outdoorsman, if you will. So that's one of the things you're going to teach me because that's one of the things I don't know that much about is the uh, the fly fishing aspect. I wouldn't even think twice. Normally, until you say that, uh, going outside and yeah. flipping the the rod around, you know, yeah. uh, practicing the swing if it's uh, nice enough weather. But that that's what's so I don't know if bow hunting is like that, but the thing with fly fishing is there's so many different tiered levels of of angling. You know, there's the beginner level, and and you can catch fish at any level. Mm-hmm. At a beginner level, um, I've I've taken guys out guiding. I've taken young kids, twelve. 13 year old kids. I mean, even my son, he started fly fishing when, when he was five, right? Mm-hmm. And, and people that never touched a fly rod before, and I could get them catching fish within 30 minutes, 40 minutes of just basic stuff. And so that's that's the beauty of the sport is you can connect to it on all yeah. different levels. The problem is, is one reason why we're doing a show like this is the same thing with hunting is, is how do I get into this sport mm-hmm. where I'm not going to spend, you know, a second mortgage in, in, in finding out how to get involved with it. Yeah. It is that way a little bit with, with archery. Um, that definitely levels. But the funny thing is, is that as an archer, you'll you will ha- go through this where stage where you pick up a bow and you'll shoot it for the first time and you're lights out because the bows are you know the technology is phenomenal. Yeah. You'll just ping ping ping. Yeah. Lights out. And then all of a sudden you'll see yourself slowly go down because you start getting in your head. You start thinking through it too much. You start. You have these uh, auto processes and little bits of, uh, you know, they call it uh, target panic, and it's crazy. And so you'll then you'll you'll kind of get over that and you'll steep back up. And but uh, as far as success goes, it, it probably is a lot easier to get success early on as a fisherman. Um, I, I've been hunting, and I got to correct myself from the last episode. I've actually started hunting. I bought my first boat in two thousand seven, so about ten years, and I, I haven't shot anything any big game uh-huh. with my, my bow. I've had several close calls, but that's just the way it goes, yeah. you know? But, um, yeah, there is definitely a, a, yeah. a, a curve, I guess, if you will, yeah. but, you know, oh, it's the same thing with fly fishing. I mean, yeah. I, I, you know, sometimes, you know, guys like I, I'll, I'll work with, with the, with the guy I've, I've guided in a few times and we've gone out and, you know, he goes out fly fishing every other week, and then we we hook up an, a year later, and he's developed bad habits. You know, and I ask him, "Hey, have you caught a lot of fish?" Well, not the last couple. I haven't done too well. Well, I can tell because <laughs> you're doing certain things that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. It's the same thing. Those old habits yeah, are it's the easy same thing. to they creep just, back they in. They just creep in. I mean, it's like with sports too. Mm-hmm. I mean, you just develop bad habits, and and uh, that's why it's important that you research. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the beautiful thing about the web. We're going to talk about it later, and one of the points I want to make. Um, that's the beautiful thing about the web. You can learn so many different things, yeah, um, and you can learn a lot of bad habits too yeah. if you're not, you know, if you're not careful. There's probably a little with with fly fishing anyway, probably the same as bow hunting with 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 archery and anyway, bow hunting and, and target shooting, whatever you do. I mean, you, you could have the slightest, I mean, minute little thing that you're doing wrong that creeps in uh, with target panic. Literally, target panic is where you're, in, you know, this is good podcast and you can't yeah. see what I'm doing yeah. but I'm holding right the, like yeah. holding the bow right he's holding the bow uh, and uh it, you could literally just sit like this and and when you go to twit or pull the trigger your target panic causes you to close your eyes just a little bit or yeah. it, it just for a split yeah. second or it causes you just to kind of just to flinch just a little bit and that little movement of your arm at 20 Trajectory. yards yeah. I mean you're going to be I mean you're going to be within you know maybe a few inches once you start shooting at 40, 50, 60 yards or you, you go to those, you know, the, yeah. the competitions or some of those uh, some of those 3D target shoots where they got a 110-yard shot uh-huh. out there, man, you, you, your arrow might as well be in the next county. It's gone. Yeah. little teeny twitch like that, and it's, yeah. it's really hard to overcome. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's funny. It's, it's 
it's almost the same thing. There, there's been times when you know there's certain ways to approach a hole. Mm. Some guys are idiots and they just go <laughs> right to the right to the money spot is what I like to call it of a yeah. hole. And 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 it's, you know this is a novice way of approaching it. But there's mm-hmm. some guys. I mean, one bad cast and you can throw your your line over the fish. You can scare and you're it. done. I mean, you're done. <laughs> I mean, it's you know there's I, there's so many stories that I have and I don't want to bore you with all these stories. But I remember one. One uh, river, it's up in Idaho. It's called the Warm River. It's just, it's pristine. The water comes out of a of a spring. It's crystal clear. There's n- there's nothing in there. No pollution. There's nothing. It's just crystal clear, and the water is just glassy. And I remember I saw a, a brown trout rise, and I could tell he's big by his lip coming up. And it, may, it took me two hours to get to him. I could have ran in there in five minutes and been there, but it took two hours, and I finally landed him. And it was he was only like sixteen inches. But at the end of the day, it was like it's one of my, it was like my greatest accomplishments in my fly fishing career because I like worked my butt off. You set your tar- was, on a target. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm going to work there, work at them. That's awesome. Yeah, it was pretty neat. Speaking of stories, I guess that's one of the things that I think uh, I, I wanted to, and both of us have talked about doing. Um, so when we get a, a line set up, a phone line set up, um, it's going to be just dedicated for just voicemail, essentially. Yeah. People can call in. Um one of our favorite things, or at least mine, you probably have the same situation, but is to sit around and, and uh, after a day of hunting, or even if you're not hunting, you're just camping, you're, you're listening to the uh, the funny stories that people have. I've got my fair share of funny, uh, interesting stories um, with uh, with hunting success stories, I guess. But uh, it doesn't have to be old-timer stories, but, you know, kind yeah. of that, uh, that, that, boy, when I was a kid, and I, yeah. yeah. And I caught a fish. It was yeah. 25 inches long and 300 yeah. pounds. And, yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. But uh, I have one. So, and this is going to start off the whole the whole thing so we can, uh, we we can take op- it from there. Yeah, we want to open the, the podcast, the, the format that we want to do. I mean, we'll, wanna, we'll open up with our sponsorships and we'll mm-hmm. give them some give them some love because they're helping sponsor our show, right? But then we also want to start the next section with kind of a, um, a Q&A. Yeah. And then also with emails and then, and then voice calls. And so that's... Well, like be, you said on yeah. the first one, it's a community, right? You yeah. Hear you want to build community. a community. You want to hear from you. I think that's... Uh, we can all learn from each other. Um, and Matt talked about a phone call or a voicemail that we'll have dedicated for Audi Guide. Uh, but for the time being, if you want to record on your device, right? Your oh, mobile yeah. device. Yeah. Um, it could be on your tablet. It could be even on your computer. Uh Export it to an MP3 player, MP3, or any type of an audio file. If you send that file and it, keep it like two, three minutes, that's cool. Um, send it to audiguide.talk at gmail.com and I'll have that in the, the spell Audi Guide one more time so they don't know. O U T I E G U I D E. That's Audi Guide. Uh, for those brain impaired, Audi is just short for outdoors yep so uh, i could see some people <laughs> you know, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we have some cool concepts built around that we want to build out the audi brand so we have some things we're going to introduce and uh a lot of you guys out there listening will probably have products hashtag and, get Audi. hashtag get Audi. that's something we're going to push um anyway yeah so back to what you're saying okay so i'm going to embarrass myself I got a funny from the beginning too. so this is uh, this happened several years ago. I was in college, and and maybe let me maybe I should do a legal disclaimer. <laughs> the following stories may or may not be true. <laughs> it may not exactly be the most legal thing that I ever did in my life, but I was <laughs> disclaimer. I was in my early twenties and dumb. Anyway, so <laughs> I was still rifle hunting at this point. I was going to Utah State University during the rifle hunt, um, and. One of my buddies was coming up to hunt with me up in the up in up Logan Canyon uh, that weekend. So it was like a Thursday, I think it was. And I decided I was going to go scout this area. Now, it's it's uh, an area where you can drive. I don't have a, I didn't have a truck, so I drove my car up, and you can drive clear way up high. It's paved for pretty much to like a camping spot that people go to, but it's paved all the way up, and you get out and hike back in to where you can hunt. Well, you can you can hunt anywhere really, but mm-hmm. you don't really want Good to do it on the road. Yeah, yeah. So I took my rifle because I knew that if I didn't, I would um, have a chance to uh, backhand the biggest buck of my life without a gun and wouldn't be able to do anything about it. Mm-hmm. So I just took it. I wasn't anticipating on shooting anything. So got up there, hiked around, didn't uh, see anything. We're just mainly a scouting uh, trip, kind of figure out where we were going to go. Um, was headed down. It was still light. Um, and was just kind of driving. So it was a truck right in front of me that was also heading down. Um, light enough to shoot. You could see pretty good, and, but, but it was, you know, 
head and down time. And uh, on the side of this hill, so I was on the paved, and this is my car. This is a, two, a 1992 Toyota Camry. Nice. Oh, yeah. Um, College student car. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. So <laughs> it's, it's embarrassing, <laughs> but um, the road, you know how they, when they cut a road out, yeah. they, they cut the, the bank of the mountain. If it's a mountain coming down, it'll, uh-huh. it'll kind of cut real steep, like where they dug it out. Yeah. So I was driving, and this truck was going pretty slow in front of me. So I was just kind of looking around. They were doing the same. I think the Road Hunters or something like that. It was a, it was a dad and his his boy. I could see him, uh, probably on twelve or something. And so I I was just driving, and I, I noticed out of the corner of my eye, I could see up, just above that steep embankment, probably twenty yards back, a doe just standing there, like stretched neck out, look looking down at all the yeah yeah look you know the cars going by. So I stopped just to kind of look at it because the first deer I'd seen that night, and then I started looking. There's one other one, another another doe, another doe, another doe, and I could see a couple other backs up there. And all of a sudden, I see this four point whoop, raise his head, and I'm like, "Wow! Oh crap! Yeah!" <laughs> and uh, I had my my two seventy in my car. <laughs> so this is where it becomes may or may not be true. I may or may not have pushed the automatic window. The window rolls down. I didn't put my car in park. Just kept my foot on the brake. I didn't want to scare this thing off. It was a big buck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Biggest buck I've ever seen. Biggest buck I ever shot. <laughs> or may or may not have shot. Um, so I, I kind of get my gun and I load one in my in the chamber and I take it off safety and I'm leaning out. I'm literally may or may not be resting my arm on my window, like sitting in my front oh, driver's seat. Oh man, <laughs> and it gets better. So I may or may not pull the trigger, and it dropped. Oh. It, like, flipped over backwards and dropped. And the, this is the best part. It rolls oh. down the hill. It's, it's, it it goes right down the steep embankment, literally a half a yard from the paved road. <laughs> and I'm still sitting in my front seat of my car at this point. <laughs> oh, no. And so at this point, it's like, I don't know. We're still probably having half, half an hour before it's dark. But I'm like, oh crap! Yeah, maybe a few other Excellent. choice yes, words, sure. but because I didn't have a knife, and I'm sitting here thinking, I'm picturing myself driving down the canyon. And this is a windy in, canyon in a with this deer bloody on the top of my thing, and I'm holding it with my hand <laughs> trying to keep it from not going off because I'm by myself. Yeah, and then so literally like these the people the the, the dad and the son in front of me. They heard the shot. They were maybe only 20 yards in front of me in their truck. And they had just curved around the bend when I saw the doe, so they didn't see yeah, me yeah, shoot. Yeah, yeah. They come back, and I'm standing there with my car parked right next to You're a still... big four-point right next to the side of the road. <laughs> they were looking at me like, what would you do? What? <laughs> we were they just pissed? here. Did this thing jump out and um, let you kill you? They were pissed. Oh, the the yeah. boy was like... Oh like pissed at you or pissed at the situation? Pissed at the situation. Okay, got it. All right. And cool. they're just like, what happened? How did oh, this happen? Man. Yeah. And then luckily for me, an, an old man, it was up there hunting too, I, uh, Kate drove right down, saw me by the deer, and he's like, well, this is a predicament, you think? <laughs> so he uh, luckily had a knife, and he and he uh, helped, you clean. helped me clean it out. Well, I cleaned it, you know, gutted it out. He's like, well, how are you going to get it down? Well, good question. He's like, well, I'll throw it in my truck. So threw it in his truck, drove right down. Really? And it was good. Oh, nice. So nice. It was the easiest deer I ever had to shoot. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, but uh, yeah, may or may not may, have been may true. Or may or not have happened. Sat in my yes. car. So I've had, anyway, I've had many. Uh, I've got so many stories. Hopefully, they're funny for you because I think they're funny for me. <laughs> One time, uh, we were up on the Snake River, the Henry's Fork, and uh, I, I had a. a, a, a a father and and his best friend and and um, they're big guys and fairly, <laughs> is that putting a nice and, big well, guy? and it was hard for me to get going you know and it was a hot <laughs> summer day and um, great guys religious I mean they don't swear they're mm-hmm. just you know good down to earth you know God fearing men and and uh, we were on the Snake River we're just having a great time we we talk about you know scriptures and stuff and you know mm-hmm. they're always relating relating fly fishing to to the gospel and Christianity and all that stuff. Men, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But I mean, they, no, they, they've thought it out. I mean, this is deep. <laughs> this is deep stuff. And anyway, we're, we're, we're having those that kind of an experience. And um, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the Snake River, specifically the Henry's Fork, 
there's a lot of college kids, co-eds, that mm. like the tube down it in the summer. Kayak, uh, yep. tube, the whole thing, right? We did that Especially, up in Logan. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I mean, that's what they do. And it just so happened that one of these co-eds, there was a group of, of girls, college girls, that were floating by us when we were fly fishing and just got a little crazy and they just started flashing us. Oh, geez. I mean, just letting it all hang <laughs> out. And I mean, it was one of the most, <laughs> it was awkward. What is it that possesses them to do that, by the know. way? I don't know. I don't know. Hey, let's just go flying down the road. Hey, thought. there's some guys yeah, holding in a boat. Yeah. Well, let's just bear it all. I've never, like, like when I see someone, I don't think, hey, I want to expose myself to these people. Like, it doesn't, that thought doesn't cross my mind. I like, don't get it. Yeah, it's I don't mindset. even, you know, I mean, I don't it's do it with deficiency. my wife. It's a deficiency. I don't yeah. even think that with my wife, yeah. you know, but anyway. It's a deficiency. It was just, brain it was funny. It, it was just, it was just dead. It was just awkward silence for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't even think any of us talked. It was just, it was really weird. It was, it was funny though. We laughed after, you know, the next night we were out just dinking around at the campfire and they just... I think that was the first time. It was like 24 hours until we talked about it. Really? And the one guy started laughing about it, you know, because it was like... The guy had to come uh, out of the corner just shaking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walking yeah, back and it was forth. Just, it was great. It was great fun. Yeah. Great That's funny awesome. story. Great funny story. Anyway, so if you uh, if you guys out there have any stories you'd like to share, um, again, once we get the, the uh, phone number up, great. If, uh, if not, get on your phone, record it, you know. Put it in an email, send it off. Technology is pretty awesome, pretty easy. Mm. Uh, if you're an old fart, get your kids to help you. They'll do it. They'll help you figure it out. Oh, they'd love to. Show you where to push record. Or yeah. get on YouTube. YouTube.com, not hard. You can yeah, figure you can it out. Anything. Not the hard. Mm-hmm. So anyway, cool. Yep. So what do we got next? Well, so after we do, after we do, you know, go through Q&A, because I'm hoping we have people ask questions. Um Hunting, yeah. fishing, yeah, if anything. Yeah, if you have questions, questions yeah. anything. If we don't know it, if you have emails, you can find it. and if you say you guys are crazy, you guys said to do this, this, this. I completely disagree. You know, if you want to be one of those people, go ahead, shoot us an email. Um, after we do the emails and, and the voice calls and funny stories and things of that nature, we want to talk about hunting and, and fishing in the news, um, just to kind of keep you in the know. Mm-hmm. Um, every week we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna scour the webs and see if there's there's uh, any relevant stories to, to hunting and fishing, just the outdoors in general that we think might be relevant, might be worth talking about, sharing And if with anyone you. has one, if you come across one that you see is relevant or you'd like to yeah. be talked about, shoot it over. Shoot an email. Let us know. Yeah. You want to hear, if you want to hear our slant, um, you know, I think slant it's... Slant slash red. Yeah, I think it's refreshing. You know, I was thinking about this as I was coming over here and, and you know, preparing my thoughts. You know, listening to the radio and in the news, if you go to your Facebook timelines, all that stuff, I tell you right now, the news is not good. There's so many polarizing things that are just... And getting, everybody's yeah, got an opinion. and everybody's got an opinion about it. And if and, and it just seems that this this time and juncture in, in, for, in our country, it's everything is really divisive. And I mean, things are tearing families apart. They're mm-hmm. tearing apart relationships yeah. and friendships. And I think that's one... One unique characteristic about the outdoors and doing something in the outdoors is when you're engaged in that activity and you're engaged with people in those activities, all that other stuff doesn't ever matter. Oh, yeah. You can have drastic differences when it comes to an approach, a hunting approach. Um, yeah. Gosh, we just last year we had one where we uh, were doing uh, a particular kind of approach and it, you know, we were thinking this is crazy, it's not going to work, but... You know, that's a, it, it may work for somebody, it, it may not. So, but, yeah. but you can come back together and you can be friends. You know, it's not yeah. a, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not to say that there's not divisive issues with fly fishermen. It used to be oh. dry fly versus nymphing. I mean, they were. You know, some people thought that if you nymph, mm-hmm. it's not really fly fishing. Matthews bows versus Hoyt bows. Yeah, exactly. Or I mean, compound they, versus that. traditional. There's, there's still like that kind of you know f- that friction with oh for sure within hunting within fishing outdoors and stuff of that nature. But just the general idea of the outdoors. Um, you want to know a big one? This will, this will be a divisive one. You want to get into hunting, but. Um, Fixed broadheads versus mechanical broadheads. That will bring out the claws, brother. I'm really? telling you. Oh, jeez. We need to bring two people on. Gosh, be there, there are. Uh, I have my opinions, uh, and we can state those at later times. But uh, yeah, it's either it's either. I mean, just angrily for one or angrily against yeah. one. Oh, it's, it's not it's, real whole lot of it's middle the ground. Same. I mean, it, it to the same degree. It's it's like that with fly fishing. There's some guys that are just. They're so brand loyalist 
and oh, not just sure. brand loyalties, but but the type, the strategies uh-huh. of fly fishing. I mean, I know honestly, there's guys. I've been out on the river fishing, and I'm and and I and I'm gonna have an episode where we talk about Czech style, European style. That's the style that I love to fly fish. I I've had know what guys, that is. yeah. I mean, exactly. I mean, there's there's a small, minute percentage. I would say one percent of the fly fishing population in the U.S. actually uses this style. Interesting. Um, which no, funny though is the Europeans are the ones that are always winning the fly fishing world championships. Mm-hmm. And so as a kid, when I was younger, I was like, man, why is that? Well, it's because they use this style and they're really good at it. Mm. Um, it I've had guys yell at me, that's not fishing. <laughs> that's not fly fishing. And I'm like, what? I'm like, who are you to say? Just caught a fish there, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Usually as I'm catching a fish, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, so we want to take, take a few minutes each week in, in, the, in the show. I'm going to talk about different uh, hunting and fishing articles uh, in the news. Um, as always, we will we will um, we will post these we will post these uh, news items in our show notes to so that you can link and you can stay engaged. And we will also share them on our Facebook page. If you go to Audi Guide and you're in Facebook, you you search for Audi Guide, you'll see you'll see us on there. We have an OG uh, logo, <laughs> and the O is a compass. Uh, shout out to to Matt's brother Nick, yeah, who uh, helped us with that logo. It looks really cool. Um, Anyway, uh, a couple that I want to talk about. The first one is this one. It's, it's from hatchmag.com. Um, it talks about uh, uh, Rios, which is a fly fishing brand. Um, they're putting together free fly fishing how-to video series. Um, you can go to, you can go to ha- this article, this link, and you can probably Google it for a Rio how-to fly fishing series. Um, so I'll post it to YouTube? Or yeah, what? I'll, I'll post it on yeah. our – Yeah. I'll well, no, there's all these, uh, these YouTube Yeah, I think, they, they, I think they're – Videos, I guess. Posted I think YouTube. they're hosted on their domain, but they're by Vimeo. I think is the, oh, the video player. But anyway, I, I don't bring it up. I don't. The reason why I bring it up is is not the the highlight that these videos are so cool because I only watched one of them. I was like, meh, it's okay. <laughs> I, I, I the reason why I bring it uh, bring it up is because it's just the idea that you can you can learn anything um, in the world using the power of the internet. Oh, for sure. Right. Um, sp- specifically YouTube. Uh, and videos. I mean, it's just there's so much information. It's just at your fingertips. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember as a kid growing up, I had to read books. I had to watch VHS videos. You had to listen to the old timer yeah, rant about I mean, for three hours yeah, before. You had to yeah, it was before he'd yeah, get up there and actually really, show you what it is. Yeah, it was really difficult. And and the thing that's really nice about um, the reason why I bring this up is because if if you're getting into a new sport and you have no clue on how to do it, literally with just maybe an hour of research online. You're going to be blown away at what you can what you can learn, and uh, nice. with that said, if you have if you want to know anything, feel free. You can you can seriously ask us. You can send in an email or a voice call. Um, and another thing too, if you're good at your trade, so on the flip side, if you're really good at something, maybe yeah. you tie flies, maybe you have a, a, a great strategy or great way to, to, to shoot, you know, archery. Whatever. Yeah. For instance, uh, the Go guy ahead. that I uh, that I uh, purchased my bow from, Jeremiah, super good dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's at Wild Arrow Archery here in Centerville, Utah. Um, he's one of those individuals that uh, I know him a little bit, um, not super well, but no, well enough to know that I, when you talk to people around, that he's one of those guys that is just a prodigy when it comes to bows. He can, he just has a feel. He can touch yeah. a bow and feel it. Second and know. nature, exactly. Yeah. And it's one of those, you know, look. Those are the type of people that you want to gravitate towards when you're, when you're, especially when you're beginning, uh, you know, and, and learn from. But if you're one of those guys. Then shoot, we want to reach out to you specifically because we are at least I am taking the approach that I'm going to learn from this, uh, and for selfish reasons, I want to learn and become the best yeah. at what I do from those people that we you know maybe able to get on. So yeah, it, but the, the another point I was I was going to make is saying along the theme of what Matt was talking about. If you were awesome at your trade, and uh, or you're awesome at a specific skill in fly fishing or, or, or archery. Um, maybe you have a really cool product or, or, or something along. Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to launch your own YouTube channel and, and tie those flies and, and give back to the community. What's really neat about outdoors, um, and it's probably the same with other niches as well, is, is there is a community out there. They, they just don't know it. Mm-hmm. And, and one thing with Audi Guide is we want to bring that community together so that we can all help each other. I mean, Matt and I are not... This is not our exit strategy and our, our retirement. I mean, this is not going to become our jobs. It would be it'd be kind of cool if we did this full time. But to be honest, 
we just we want to help build a community so we can we can enhance each of enhance our sports. Yeah, exactly. Right? Make people the best fly fishermen. There's nothing there's nothing better than when I, I see someone that I'm out fly fishing with and I'm the first one that ever exposes them to the sport. Mm-hmm. And then three, four years later, uh, they're just they're better fly fishermen mm-hmm. than me. I mean, yeah. It just it, it brings so much satisfaction to me. So you know that's that's one thing that we want to do. And an Audi Guide, we're going to be there to help you, especially if you have a product and and maybe you don't know how to market that product. One thing that I'm I specialize in a lot is digital marketing, and so we will help you there. We'll help you along your if you have any goals or dreams or aspirations uh, to do that. So, yeah, for sure. We we we're more than willing also to help you. Um, maybe hone it. You know, hone your craft. If you make if you make a duck call, if you make. Um, a, uh, you know, a trad bow or something like that. Shoot, we could test it yeah. out. We give it a try and see what it's like, and yeah. uh, maybe give you some points on on uh, where to go from there. But, yeah, no, it's, it's, and you can school us on yeah. why this thing you're doing is the best, yeah. and and uh, help us as well. Yeah, I mean, if you're out, if you're if you're, for example, if you're a fly fisherman and you, and you have a vest, right? But you fish with a, a fanny pack, or you fish with a chest vest, and you're like, you know what? I really wish that my vest had a little pocket here or had this little thing here I would zip or I'd pop I'd clip and boom 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 no idea how many times I've said that exactly if you have an idea like that seriously there there is someone out there and it might cost it might take a little bit of capital not as much as you think you know you watch these movies like Shark Tank and they're like hey it was $200,000 I had to mortgage my home to start this product those guys I promise you they they were idiots the way that they did it right I mean literally idiots you could go out there's people that will help you design it the people that will help you fabricate, fabricate and give you a concept or a prototype, literally nothing. There's there's people out there to help you with that. We can help you with that too, as, as much as we possibly can. Um, anyway, that was kind of what I want to talk about in terms of of that specific uh, article. Um, I'll still put the link on, even though I that wasn't the main purpose of it was to mm-hmm. teach you how to fly fish. Yeah. Although I, I'm pretty sure uh, Rio, I'm pretty sure Rio does an excellent job. Um, they've been great with me. They've actually sent me. Um, you know, fly line to test out and review. Really? Yeah, that, I did. I, yeah, there's, uh, there's the guy that makes the line. I've, I've had a few, a few times and send me some lines and I've given my, my opinion about it. And, you know, you can do the same thing. It doesn't hurt to ask if, you know, if there's Orvis or Rio or, or, uh, some of the other ones out there, um, Cortland, send them an email, say, Hey, I fly fish all the time. Would you be willing to let me test out your product? Yeah. Boom, 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 boom. I did the same thing with, um, I was looking one year to get in, to get cho- a choke tube for my, um, my duck gun and uh, there's tons of stuff out there and I've heard a lot of different things and I reached out to the people at Briley and said hey I want to test this out and I want to I want to be able to review it and, and help you out and because I'd heard they were you know the one that I heard from so many people that were just the best and I was like why do the best so I tested a couple models out and mm-hmm. uh, patterned it and uh, reached out to Briley and to get you know a couple test ones Guy was super generous. He sent me a couple. He said, "Yeah, test them out. Let me know how it goes." And it's awesome. I would plug those people all day long. Yeah. Because one, their chokes are phenomenal, but they two, they're just willing to work with me, help me, you know, give me some tips, and uh, let me test it out. And ended up buying one of their chokes because they're the best. Yeah. And and it was it was awesome to do. Yeah. So. I mean, that's just the that's the key when you talk about owning your own product, you owning your own brand. Mm-hmm. Really, it's the relationship that you create with your users of your product mm-hmm. i mean that's how you build the loyalty and i mean there's some guys i've broken fly rods we'll talk about it in later shows which are the best fly rods which are the best reels best fly line it's going to be subjective there's people when i mention the ones that i'm going to mention will probably think that i'm crazy want to start another but, hot topic yeah ex- <laughs> oh yeah exactly i mean that's but i have some you know not so common not so popular uh brands of fly rods that i use but i'm telling you what I've had them for years. I'll continue to use them. Um, in the last yeah. uh, last four or five years has been this um, crazy, like, uh, I guess, I don't know what to call it. It's like a revolution for clothing and camo. And the, the clothing that's getting put out right now by some of the some of the designers, First Light, Sitka, Kuyu, phenomenal. But I'll tell you what, you want the claws to come out. <laughs> They, there are people really? that will swear by that kind of stuff. So we're I'm I'm all about creating this uh, hot environment where people can 
Nice. After I, after I just said that outdoors brings us together, we're like <laughs> we're like breaking down that barrier. Like maybe not. What brings us together to fight maybe a little not. bit, and then yeah. we hug it out when but we're it's, done. But it's weird. Like, isn't that kind of how we are, though? I mean, even with even with my some of my closest buddies. I mean, I got one buddy, and it's just all Sims. It's all <laughs> Sims, and you know, three hundred plus dollar uh, breathable waders, and you know, six hundred dollar mm-hmm. sage rod, and. You know, the reel's got to be the, you know, it's got to be a premium Lawson reel. And, Does he catch more and, fish than you? No, he doesn't. <laughs> but th- that's not the point. The point is, is he's just, this is the best. You know, we we go at it. But you know what? At the end of the day, fly fishing, we we come together. We sit around the campfire. We mm-hmm. share stories and share each other's company. And, and yeah. we're brothers, right? And yeah. I think that's that's something unique. However, there are some people that are just a-holes and, mm, yeah. you know, they're just... You know? yeah. yeah it's kind of Been interesting of i hope i hope that's the one thing maybe we can do that maybe one of these days we can if i come across these people i'll put them on video or i'll film them and <laughs> it'll uh, be the yeah uh, the, exactly the audio yeah. yeah it is yeah i mean there's just there's so many i mean even myself i was telling the story one time of this guy that called me a bait fisherman right and i was telling it to i, I taught a sunday like school that's class. some kind of yes and so i did so i said that i'm teaching a sunday school You're class there's like fisherman. there's like 60 people in this class and i said this guy had the wherewithal to call me a a bait fisherman <laughs> and i'm like i couldn't believe it and this guy in the back raises his hand he's like well i'm a bait fisherman does that make me a bad fisherman i mean he was <laughs> mad at me and he called me out and i was thinking, sitting there thinking like you know now i'm the a-hole yeah you really. <laughs> you're laughing at this guy's burn or attempt yeah, to burn exactly. you and then yeah you get exactly burned. that's um, funny yeah um cool you were telling me about earlier a uh Earlier this week, uh, an article that you had talked about had something to do with a, a criminal defense attorney and or something like that. What was that about? Yeah, so this is an article. It's on New York Times. Uh, we'll have it in the show notes. Um, it was really it's a it's a good article. It's about this guy who got into criminal law as an attorney, and one mm. of the first things, yeah, uh, one of the first things he did though, in conjunction with this, is he learned to uh, fly fish. And there was a guy that was. Um, I don't think he was a prosecuting attorney. He was just a fellow defense attorney. And he was also a fly fisherman. He's the one that taught him how to fly fish. You know, it talks about, you know, this will make you a better attorney and everything. Anyway, mm. so he goes through and he 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 shares like his his fly fishing trajectory, his 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 expertise with it. As it grew, he found himself rubbing shoulders with, you know, some of these these uh higher ups in, in law. Like he actually went with uh Justice. Um, was the one that just died recently? The one uh, that Scalia. Just, Scalia, yeah, Justice yeah. Scalia went fly fishing, and he said, "Really? Yeah, he got to go." I mean, he he was this like new guy in it, and he'd done it for a couple of years, and he's already fly fishing with the Supreme Court justice. Wow. Anyway, he goes on to talk about just how much it helped his career. One time, the owner of his firm was like, "Hey, listen, go 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 fly fish with the prosecuting attorney. Go do go do <laughs> do uh, dude talk is what he called it. You know, and he he just was it was a vital component." Um, fly fishing was a vital component to his career as an attorney. In fact, I want to read one little snippet from it. It says, the notion that a personal rapport between prosecutors and defense attorneys can affect the outcome of a client's case might, in fact, shape the rest of his life is an uncomfortable one. It is, however, a reality. And it can be argued that a defense attorney is ethically obligated to nurture good relationships with prosecutors as unpleasant as it can feel to do so. This is the key. If two opposing attorneys get along, the negotiations tend to go better for the defendant in a weak case. An afternoon fishing trip may be the difference between a conviction and a dismissal, between a misdemeanor and a felony, between a year of probation and a year of prison. Is that true? I can almost hear like a collective gasp. <gasps> no. You know, like it can't yeah. be true. But um, here's a funny thing about attorneys, and, and I'll say this um, – because I am one, I guess I can say it. Uh, and so many attorneys I know are douchebags. Like, gosh, <laughs> I don't know what it is, egos, what, but they come out of law school thinking that they have to be, you know, you watch Suits, right? They got to yeah. be Harvey Specter. I'm prick. Yeah. I'm better than you, and I'm going to prove it. And they'll just peacock all day long. And they think they're going to do better in court or in their profession or for their client who they're representing by doing this kind of crap. Um, and one of the, so I did a little bit of uh, family law. I still practice a little bit with family law, and that's one of my biggest pet peeves. There's a ton of them I have. The system is kind of rigged to uh, to where attorneys are incentivized uh, to go to trial, to stir the pot, to you know drag it out long because. 
um, they earn more earn more money by billing more hours. Yeah, okay. And yeah. the client doesn't know any better. They're taking the attorney's advice, but and they're just going with it. And then they end up walking away. Attorneys got a whole lot more money. They spend five ten thousand dollars on a divorce. They should have spent eighteen hundred bucks on, and uh, they're worse off. The kids are worse off. All kinds of stuff. And it's just the way the system's Crazy. rigged. But um, in fact, this last week I had a conversation with with opposing counsel on on the, on the divorce cases I'm working on, and I said, you know what? He was told me he said, he said to me, my obligation to my client to advocate for my client is to prepare for trial. So the in a, in a family law case, the pinnacle of uh, the the case ends with a trial where mm-hmm. the judge decides what happens, yeah. rather than the party sitting down and discussing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a judge who decides. So he yeah. says to me, that is my duty to um, to prepare for trial, and I says. I'm sorry, but yeah. I completely disagree. And just so you know, I will not and have zero intentions of ever preparing for a trial. Because in my opinion, my duty as an attorney is to counsel my client to resolve the issue for the sake of the family and the That's child. Right. Yeah. So I think a, that preparing for trial is a dereliction of your duty huh. as attorney, especially when it comes to family law. Now, if you're practicing in contract law, if you're practicing in something, yeah, you you need to take it to trial. Or if there's a, maybe somebody that's that's uh, in criminal law and they're you know they needed a good defense or they yeah. they they're swear they're innocent, then yeah. Yeah, that may, but in family law, it's a yeah. dereliction of your duty to to take it to trial, and I couldn't believe that. It's like your your whole focus is on being adversarial. Yeah. And kind of get back to the point of this this article. Um, it's long been a business strategy, if you will, to become at least proficient on a golf course. Yeah, I was going to talk about that because yeah. you do deals on a on golf, golf course. course. Yeah. And you can you can have an in with somebody. You can have you can build a relationship with somebody right there. Mm-hmm. Or maybe it's sports. So somebody's into football. You kind of do a little bit of research on your yeah. person you're trying to get in with. Figure out that they like the Colts. Yeah. And so hey, let's talk about the Colts. Let's talk about Andrew yeah, Luck. So let's in. talk about whatever you know. <clears throat> yeah. You do that, but attorneys are so dumb they don't do this. <laughs> And they're so just hyped up on I'm Harvey Specter and I'm yeah, I'm like, like, cool right yeah. And, yeah, and they got they got to uh, fight and they got to yeah. and they got to stir the pot. I had a, a so I, one of my one of my good buddies from law school, his name is Sean. He's a criminal defense attorney, and uh, he's done some some um, immigration as well. But this fits right in. He's not a fly fisherman, but he he and I talked a lot in law school about the psychological component of people and, and he kind of has that same understanding that law is not supposed to be this constant cockfight you know yeah it's it's uh, you can win a lot of battles just by becoming buddies yeah. with the person you're working with him and i team tagged on a case where we were representing one of the a utah state football player one of the very first things i ever did and um we basically got this kit off with almost nothing and it was a stupid thing. Yeah, it was, it was a, it was a possession charge for a yeah. friend that was in his car. And I believed him. Yeah, or whatever the case was. But uh, he, the judge yelled at Sean because he got the client got such it. a good deal. Yeah, because and he went in through the prosecutor and just BS with him. Hey, you know, because, and he was, yeah. he's 100 percent sincere. He's like one of the most outgoing and. Um, I don't know, friendly people that you'll ever meet. Super kind. Everybody yeah. loves him. Um, he's athletic and he's gonna he's be one successful of those guys. in whatever thing. Exactly. He, he just those, he, those yeah, yeah, he's kinda like a fart in the wind when it comes yeah. to like uh staying focused on the task for any one minute. But he, you know, he can yeah. talk with anybody and become instant friends with anybody. And um it created a situation where we were able to get a a phenomenal result for this this kid who the system had uh, had it out for, and the judge had it out for. The judge couldn't, the judge had he, no, no, nothing he could do because yeah, the state was, was dropping the case. Yeah, yeah. And the judge was pissed. Yeah. He ranted for like 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, what? what? Awesome. Can't, you can't believe this. Oh, that's funny. But yeah, it goes right along the same things, is that if you are if you're really want to do something, become a fly fisherman, become a hunter, whatever it is, get in there. Don't create this adversarial crap because yeah. that's one of my biggest, honestly, one of my biggest. I could rant forever and, and, and excuse my my language, but uh, 
I don't t- tend to throw the douchebag around wor- yeah. word around lightly, but <laughs> so many attorneys are that way. And if, oh, let me tell important. you this: if you're, if somebody out there is going through a divorce or will ever go through a divorce, and your attorney is pushing trial, or if your attorney is trying to stir the pot instead of saying, "Hey, listen, switch gears," these are some non-essential <laughs> issues. Yeah. Quit fighting about non-essential issues because the only thing you're doing is harming your kid. Yeah. If you can't walk away from the scenario where you and your wife are, or ex-wife or whatever it is are at least cordial with each other and, and can team raise your kids, then you're just screwing your kids for what? Yeah. Stupid Some, crap. Pennies. Sometimes just pennies. But Not a big seriously, deal. if your attorney's that way, get rid of them. Yeah. See, you're getting business advice. As well as outdoor advice. <laughs> and, and me getting guys. pissed. Yeah. Maybe we start another podcast. Brandon is, you know, <laughs> divorce. Business strategies. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, no, I just think it was really, I just, it, it's an interesting article. I mean, I always knew that there's things, you know, fit or golfing is probably the most go to one, but, yeah. you know, even fly fishing. And then I think back to people that I've worked with and, and I've taught how to fly fish and I've done guiding and I've just talked to, I mean, I've had people offer me jobs on the river. <laughs> you know, and it's, I'm that's just thinking, awesome. like, you know, it, it couldn't be. And that's, that's another thing you think about hobbies and what we talked about a little bit earlier about learning anything or trying to, trying to monetize something that you're really, really good at, whether it be fly tying or, mm-hmm. or, you know, uh, something along the lines with hunting. Um, that notion that, you know, you can use it to, to build your repertoire oh, yeah. of, you know, your, your profile and, you know, people like that. And, you know, my, my current boss right now, he's, he loves fly fishing. We talk fly fishing and he wants to go out with me. I can't, I mean, I don't know for sure, but I believe personally that a reason why I got hired was because I, I do fly fishing and we talked about it. I mean, that was like the first thing we talked about That's before awesome. business. So uh, anyway, yeah, that was kind of uh, one of the articles I wanted to talk about. And this is the other one you mentioned there. What, what is that one about? So this is kind of a rant. Is it? Yeah. So, do you want to rant? Go rants? Yeah. You want to talk man. about rants? Do you have any rants? It pissed you off? A well, this bit? one did. Yeah. I mean, I'll put the link. I'll put the link. It, it, it came out in October, um, and I'll put the link on the show notes. But it says, you know, first off, I hated the link. It's by, uh, it's, it, I think it's a, a news channel. I don't know. It says newschannel9.com. Um, it's about Is this, this one of those ones that showed up on your, like, feed or something? Your <laughs> I can't remember Facebook where I, feed or something? I think it was. I can't remember where I saw it. But anyway. Um, Regardless, it found yeah, its way to yeah, you. It and... Says, yeah, and the, <laughs> the title is Permitted Hunter Charged with Illegal Elk Kill. It's kind of like an oxymoron, right? It, permitted hunter. A permitted hunter. And it happened in uh, Lafayette, elk Tennessee. Elk. Yeah. Hey, hey, that's my stomping grounds. I live yeah. there. Yeah. So he was Lafayette. on the elk hunt and he was in the long, he was in the wrong unit? section, the wrong unit. And he oh. was driving home. All right. And he shot and killed and he thought he was in the right unit. I don't know if he was or not. But the reason why I wanted to bring it up, and they arrested the guy. They gave him, I think he... You know, the, the the wildlife resource, you know, management, they have their ways. They take away your gun. You can't take the animal from you. They take you. the animal from you. They take and they take away hunting rights for, you know. Did they do that to him? I think they did, yeah. Oh, wow. And sometimes it's not in, indefinite. Most of the time it's not indefinite. No. I mean, I know guys, I mean, I know a lot of guys that are idiots. And this is kind of falls along with my rant. It's just know the rules and know the regulations. If, if there's anything right now, if you're sitting on your butt and it's wintertime, it's freaking cold, and you're not going out hunting. Guess when the regs come out? Yeah, exactly. Every year. They're out. Exactly. When you're not doing They're anything. Out. Seriously, spend like 15, 20 minutes on your areas, maybe more, and, and it, that will pay off. That way you'll know exactly what you're supposed to do. I can't tell you. There's I know a handful of people that have, have fished on private property where they shouldn't. Oh, fished on not hunting. just private property, oh, but fished for sure. on, on on rivers that were closed on private property, mm-hmm. and they've had their fly fish or their fishing rights revoked for like five years, fly rod taken away, and you and to, they never go back to the sport. So we went out to uh, we were hunt. I was hunting out at the the bird refuge. It sounds like an oxymoron, but you can hunt at the bird refuge <laughs> yeah. And it's a there's a it's not a swan preserve, but they, we get a lot of swan during certain times of the year at the Bear River Bird Refuge. Mm-hmm. I was oh, yeah. out there. There was this knucklehead out there in the parking lot, popping off at swan. First of all, they're way too high. Um, you couldn't <laughs> you have hit that? them. Did you tell them that? Uh, yeah, Dude, they're way too high. Yeah. They're like a code word. Well, first of all, I was like, "What are you shooting at?" Because <laughs> it I, he didn't he didn't for he was. <laughs> I wanted to punch this guy. I should have. But what are you shooting at? I'm yeah. trying to shoot those white geese. 
Oh, wow. And they're big swan. He didn't even know the difference. He's oh, just no. popping off. And I'm like, I am. you are so lucky yeah. there isn't a warden, uh, you know, it's, wildlife guy out here looking because you would be thrown in jail because you're, or something. Yeah. Because you're shooting in the parking lot for one around, a, you know, there's the cars. You're shooting straight up in the air at these swan flying overhead just because he didn't take the time to study. Uh, enough to read, you know, to, yeah. to understand what the difference between a swan and a snow goose is. Uh, they, yeah, they may be white, <laughs> but that's See, about idiot, it. Idiots like that that just like I don't want to say ruin the sport because they don't ruin the sport. But they could. They they turn people away. In a way, they ruin it because every time, every every stupid piece of paper that you got to sign when you go do something, every disclaimer yeah, probably, you have right. is sure. the is a result of some idiot doing something and, and yeah. some. Douchebag yeah. attorney deciding to turn it into a lawsuit, right? So yeah. they could potentially ruin a sport. Yeah. They could. Easy. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, I think of, you know, I, I put, know your regulations. It's, it's someone that it frequently fly fishes the rivers in Utah. Our, our water rights in this state are just, just let me, this is probably oh, dry. A desert. dry. It's, I hate it. I hate our water rights in this state because there's a private versus public lands dispute right now. It's taking place in legislature. With the governor, with our Utah Supreme Court, um, public I, I hate, dispute. Yes, I hate our Ooh. public access laws. Idaho and Montana. If anything, Idaho's got it right personally. Um, but rules are rules. There are mm-hmm. certain sections that I I used to fish when I was a kid because a private landowner let us fish there. But now they're closed off, and I know what type of, of, of I know the monster trout that are in there. I know there's places where my dad and brother took me fly fishing. I want to share that same experience. So I guess yeah. you're right. It does. It does those those idiots it ruins it. And the thing it yeah. is that I just you gotta wonder if that guy is out there shooting the white the 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 white geese, right? The albino <laughs> the giant geese. white if, geese. The guy is out there shooting the <laughs> albino geese, right? Gosh. Because he's never seen uh, white geese before, right? Freaking idiot. If you gotta wonder if he would have spent maybe ten minutes, fifteen minutes studying the regulations, putting a little homework in, you know what 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 would have happened? I don't know. He may have gone out and been unsuccessful, successful, yeah. but that he wouldn't have he wouldn't have put at risk. Mm-hmm. But just that concept yeah. of, of more people doing that, because I mean mm-hmm. it's the same thing. I, I've I've gone fishing, I've seen guys fishing and and, and littering and I mean rant, the, you know that kind hey, of. But Brandon, I can't afford one of them old fancy regulations. Yeah, except they're free. They're free, they're free. and they're, they're online. Nice. Yeah, they're online. You can download so if you got a phone, you don't if you have to move off your yeah, couch. Yeah, if you got a phone, just they're right on there. In fact, I think I downloaded the one for. The Utah regulations, primarily because I was trying to figure out about the turkey hunt, and uh, I just found out this last week that I was unsuccessful in the draw. So Me kinda, too. Or yeah, I'm yeah. Bummed. I'm two years so in a row, I was bummed. pissed. Uh, you so can still buy bummed. one over the counter. Yeah, the way that it but works is it's is later on. The first it's harder. If, to yeah, shoot. if you draw out in this, the first initial draw out, you get a hunt in April. If not, you get buyers over the counter, mm. and you get a hunt in May. Um, they're still gobbling a little bit, but you also have a whole lot, you got extra, work harder. a whole lot of extra people. They're yeah. pushed up higher. They're harder to find. Yeah. I'm still going to do it. No, oh, I'm going to do it too. I'm going to get, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get a turkey. I got one before. Have you ever shot a turkey? Yeah. Last year. Really? Mm-hmm. Nice. Oh yeah. You told me that. You want a, want a free thing. That's yeah. Cool. Actually from while there with Jeremiah. Cool. Yeah. Want yeah. Hunt. Guided. It was nice. Yeah. Mine wasn't guided. Mine, I had to work my butt off. Did you? Yeah, I scouted him for like this was, I scouted him for like two weeks. Did you? This is like this is this was my experience with turkey hunting. I scouted him for like two weeks, where they were roosting, where they got out, their behavior. Did in the, the morning. right way. All right, I shot my turkey at like two hours into the hunt. <laughs> Anticlimactic. <laughs> big, old, big old Tom. He was huge, and that's awesome. We had though. a great feast. Oh, it was great, but it's just like the way that hunting should be. You put in the time. Oh, for sure. You'll and be I, successful. I can tell you, like. That's the one thing I love about hunting, and not just hunting, but fishing is the same way. I learned so much about turkeys, learning to hunt them, that I, I would never have had that intimate oh, yeah. relationship with that concept of a turkey that I would have otherwise. So when I talk to people about turkey, they'd be surprised people. Turkeys can fly? Oh, yeah, they can fly. <laughs> really? You, yeah, turkeys have good eyesight? Oh, heck yeah. They they are an incredible creature when you start to study them. Oh, yeah. You know, they don't live that long, but... They're incredible birds. They're incredible creatures, and it's just you know the way that and you they're can... super fun to hunt. It's oh, they're crazy! Great. It's like miniature it's, elk. It's, it is right behind right? elk. It's yeah, kinda, right? yeah. You get it. the one time Ooh. I took my wife with me uh, turkey was turkey hunting. hunting. Okay, and so she didn't really quite understand the concept of of you know hunting. Why why the adrenaline rush and why does you know so we we get up there and we're calling and all of a sudden you hear this. 
yeah. right back. She's like, oh my gosh. And you know, got excited. So it was one of those times where she got a, got a glimpse of, of what it was like. So cool. Anyway, so, so that was my rant. You have a rant? No, I was uh, kind of pissed off with the other attorneys that for the moment. You know, yeah, that's kind of my rant this week. It's funny you just brought that article up, Bill, because that really did happen this week that I had that out with that. But, the, you know, the great thing is, oh, we got off the phone and he was saying, call me, you know, by his first name. Because yeah. uh, I was calling him Mr. So-and-so. He's like, please, call <laughs> me, call you by my first name. And I hope that you can understand. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you're a tool. But, okay, hey, <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and I won't get off on the rant again. Yeah. Because it just pisses me off. But anyway. Should have asked him to go fishing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing that much with it, but I'm, I'm, I am a bait fisherman. Oh, he would have smacked me. Oh, probably. Because I'm bad. Yeah. It's funny, business guys don't go out bait. They don't. You don't go out with a hook and worm. You don't. Guys, you don't do it for business. I've done, yeah, it, I, I've done it plenty of times with fly fishing. Mm. You know, because it's just like maybe it's the nostalgia and maybe it's the yuppiness of it. I don't well, know. I don't. You're think open fly to my world. I didn't realize I it was even a thing. I thought it was yeah. a golf course. And that oh was no, it. it's it's it's. Yeah, I mean it's. That's cool. Yeah, with with the you know my brother used to be uh, he used to be a professional guide. My when I say guide, what I've done a lot of my stuff that I, almost all of it is exclusively word of mouth. Hey, I've got a buddy that you took out. Da, da, da. That's, I Isn't don't, that I, the best I don't, form of marketing? Yeah, I don't have right? a license. I mean, I may or may not have a license. <laughs> I may or may have not taken... Disclaimer. I may, may or may have not taken a lot of people out to, to teach them. Um, but my goal is never to make money. It's just to experience, to get people exposed to the sport. So. That's cool. So we were going to, uh, I think what we should do is uh, we're going to have a product spotlight uh, and try to do each some show. sort of product spotlight every show. Um, we're, uh, you tell me, Brandon, we're, we're pushing about an hour right now. Yeah. Um, if you want to push this to next week and we have that uh, be the spot for next week, you're really, do it. just do it. Yeah. Yeah. Next week. Okay. Yeah. So we tease, have a, we have a you're cool, going to have a cool, yeah, we'll have a cool product cool. spotlight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it deals with hunting. Um, hunting, fishing is pretty much a whole lot of stuff. You know what? I've never thought about it, but you could probably use it for fishing. Fishing? Oh, yeah. yeah. You could use it for That's hiking. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, hiking, you could use it all day. See, I just have an idea. Camping. We don't have to. We, we're not going to. Maybe we don't share this app or this this tool. Don't tell maybe, maybe we create our own and we brand it as a fishing there you one, go. right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're just, see, see we're just, we're off the cusp. We're Whipping. not even, you know, but, but once again, I mean. I could probably have hire an app developer and do the same thing, just copy it verbatim, not verbatim, but mix it up a little bit, and they probably <laughs> yeah. have access to some database that has no. the same information as this one does, yeah. and then you create one. So we're just we're, see we're we're entrepreneurs, outdoor entrepreneurs, if you will. So, so let it be yeah, let's skip. We'll, we'll we'll run that next week. Awesome. All right. So uh, now that we've uh, we've we've but gone on way too can long, I, but yeah. Can, What's up? Real quick, if you have just this is something. I'm sorry to interrupt you. If you do have any products that you like that you use me specifically anybody oh, okay. talking to our audience but you too you specifically um our audience um maybe you are the owner of a product and you want audi guide to do a review or um yeah something hey, i'm always lines. about Anything. learning new yeah. new stuff just honestly send us send us an email audi guide.marketing at gmail.com we'll have that link too in the show notes uh and we'll do that We'll do that. We'll do uh, we'll do product demos. We'll do some product reviews for you on on YouTube if you want to. Um, we'll post them up on our website and uh, yeah. So just this little just, you know, perfect little, little tidbit about uh, product spotlights. Awesome. So uh, as we wrap this up, um, any final thoughts? What was that? Thanks it? to uh, thanks to Brush Tones. Brush Tones. Check them out. Absolutely. And uh, you know. Subscribe to one of our social lead media links or send us an email, audiguide dot, at gmail.com. Audiguide.promo. Dot promo at, gmail. at we'll gmail.com. We'll put it all in the show notes. We'll put it all in the show notes. But uh, check, uh, check us out for the, the notes there. Like us on the social media. Send us an email. Uh, get yourself qualified to win one of those yeah. uh, painting or those those prints. And you can choose your own. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So. Um, again, if you're interested in writing for AudiGuide.com, shoot us an email at AudiGuide.publish at gmail.com. Yeah. Hey, it's, you know, one of them will get us there. That's all right. <laughs> but if you're interested, do that. Uh, we're always looking for somebody that is an expert in their in, in their craft and will be able to provide a whole lot of help to, yeah. the, to the community that we're trying to create. Yeah. So, you know, and if we have any... I mean, if we have any type of revenue thing, we have some ideas to do rev share if you want to yeah. write for us. Um, that's one thing. Share the that love, I, bro. Yeah, that's one thing that I specialize in is, is web 
uh, digital marketing. So I know how to measure those kind of things. So um, we can help you out if you want to launch your career, anything like that. Honestly, that would be perfect. It's open format. It's open source. I mean, we're not gonna we're not gonna limit you on what you can and can't do. I mean, it's gonna be like. Uh, going to be like WikiLeaks kind of. Uh, no, I like kidding. it. <laughs> yeah, <right>. so, <laughs> Wikipedia. Um, yeah. That one. One of those wikis. <laughs> yeah, wikis. One of those wikis. <laughs> and uh, just a, one more important note. Remember to subscribe to the Audi Guide podcast and then give us a review of what you thought. You um, can be rude. You can be yeah, nice. I don't care. I, don't care. Yeah. I want to know how w- ways yeah. we can improve. We don't really know what we're doing with this, so <laughs> let us know how we can improve. But give us yeah, a review. They're important. they're important to us. We're going to read them. If there's some that are just – Brutal. I want to read them on on yeah. the podcast because I think it's funny. Yeah, and then I angry I tweets. Have, I have, I'm the youngest. <laughs> Who does that? Isn't it yeah. Jimmy Fallon? Yeah. Has angry yeah. tweets. Yeah. Angry tweets. I'm the youngest of four boys. I have very extremely. Thick oh, skin. for sure. My dad was my dad was hard on me. I'm so broken. I, mean, yeah. I, I don't have a. Yeah, I don't no have way. an offended yeah. gu- yeah, button. Can. I'm broken. Yeah. I don't exactly. even work that way. So, anyway, so uh, and always, this is one thing that is is a big passion of mine, and I will rant on it. I'm sure in the future, but remember, be responsible. Leave the outdoors better than you found it. So, Always. but uh, as uh, for now, this is uh, wrapping up this uh, show. So, this is Matt and uh, Brandon for Audi Guide saying, get outdoors. Get out. Hashtag get out. Get out.